Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies, and we're continuing my series on the business of Scotch whiskey. In this video, we're going to uh, look at the importance of whiskey tourism, both for the Scotch whiskey industry, as well as the economy of the UK, and the importance of being a whiskey tourist in Scotland as part of your uh, growing and understanding and appreciation of Scotch whiskey. There's a lot of things you can do in Scotland besides just going to distilleries and tasting whiskeys there. For example, uh, this is a bottle that I uh, filled myself. I did my own blend while taking a master class at Glen Goyne Distillery. Um, was an, sort of an old day event, so didn't go to any other distilleries that day. But it's just an awesome experience to either, as I did at uh, Glendronic in my last trip uh, in, in July 2019, or as I did at Glenfiddich, to be able to fill your own bottle straight from the cask, or to make your own blend in taking a class. Uh, this one, and it's a unique bottle, uh, 200 milliliter that I got to take home as part of uh, the class. Oh, uh, my notes are on the inside. So I, uh, you know, tasted a bunch of the, the whiskeys, figured out what I liked, and then figured out what I wanted to put in my private blend. And uh, this one has a refill hogshead, uh, first fill American oak bourbon barrel, first fill American oak sherry punchin, a first fill European oak sherry punchin, uh, and a first fill European oak sherry punchin um, and have various percentages of all these. The average ABV in all this, well, one is 58.4, another is 57.6. So overall, it's probably somewhere in the 55 to 56% alcohol of vibe. I am really, really fun experience. Very, very educational. Do a tour of the entire uh, distillery. Get to go into uh, the uh, warehouse and then have a sit down tasting of a bunch of different whiskeys. Also, they provide a lunch as part of the deal. Really, really fantastic. So, as I'm enjoying this Eric Waite blend from Glen Goyne Distillery, where I get to play master blender, master distiller, let's get into my notes. Scotch whiskey tourism saw record numbers of visitors in 2018, with over 2 million visits to Scotch whiskey distilleries from tourists for the very first time. The annual survey compiled by the Scotch Whiskey Association revealed visits were up 6.1% year-on-year and 56% more than in 2010. The survey also showed spending at visitor centers was up by 12.2% to £68.3 million, an additional £7.4 million compared with 2017, and 154% more than in 2010, a result of the continued industry investment in world-class tourist centers. Over 20 different nationalities visited distilleries last year, with Germany and the USA providing the largest number of Scotch whiskey tourists. Increased visits from France, Spain, and the Netherlands were also reported, as well as India and China. Collectively, Scotch whiskey distilleries remain the third most visited attraction in Scotland. At the company level, McAllen opened a new state-of-the-art distillery in 2018, which has attracted many new visitors. So 
So that last distillery you saw there at McAllen, I was able to visit in June 2018. The new distillery opened up early June, I think it was June 3rd, and then I was there just a couple weeks after that. Really a fantastic tour. Now, I've had some issues with some of the marketing schemes of McAllen. Many people have had problems with uh, their increasing of uh, certain prices of certain bottles and so forth, but I would say it is a really, really, really cool tour. Really, really liked it, and it is doing a really, really good job at putting sort of a modern twist on uh, whiskey education. Now, there's gonna be some people who's gonna be sort of, uh, you know, complaining about, oh, it's becoming too Disneyland. Oh, you know, it's all show and this kind of thing. And I totally disagree. While I don't like advertising that has a bunch of hoopla on it that doesn't say anything about a whiskey or isn't even mentioning a whiskey, you know, uh, just a bunch of special effects or some weird stuff or whatever, um, I do think you can make something entertaining and informational, infotainment. And I think McAllen has done an excellent job of that with their distillery. Um, there's something very similar to that in the Napa Valley here in California. Uh, there is um, the Castile de Amorosa, which essentially they built an Italian castle, uh, an authentic castle, uh, with, and, and a lot of the items inside the castle are uh, actually imported from uh, Italy. And really, really, really cool uh, tour there. But there are people in the Napa Valley who uh, complain, hey, it's just a big tourist trap. Oh, it's so touristy. And, they, and you know, they're losing the, you know, the essence of Napa Valley being about the wine. And it's not true. Yes, the Napa Valley has become the number one tourist destination in California. It used to be Disneyland. And in fact, some people kind of complain that putting something like that in the Napa Valley is trying to become like Disneyland, you know, with their own little castle. And uh, another winery that people kind of complain about uh, is Dariush, this Persian palace uh, put on the Silverado Trail in the Napa Valley. But I want to say this about both of those wineries. Yeah, they're very showy and they're very touristy and so forth, but they have not forgot about the wine. I would say particularly Dariush is producing some really high quality wines. Mm, 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 mm. And it's not all show. They have not lost the spirit of what it is to be a winery and produce high quality wines. And the reality is uh, the McAllen Distillery and the upcoming Johnny Walker experience that'll be coming up uh, near Edinburgh and uh, the Castillo de Amorosa and uh, Dariush in the Napa Valley bring in more tourists, bring in more money, more business to uh, local shops, to restaurants, hotels, everything else that benefits from wine tourism or whiskey tourism than a lot of the other small wineries or distilleries that are complaining about the Disneyland factor. So I don't have any problem of the big glitzy glamorous advertisements or uh, distilleries or wineries and so forth, so long as you don't lose the essence of what it's supposed to be about, it's all about the whiskey or the wine if you're in the Napa Valley. In April 2018, Diageo announced a 150 million pound investment in whiskey tourism in Scotland, the centerpiece of which will be a Johnny Walker experience in Edinburgh. The Spirit of Speyside Festival and the Fish Hill on Isla have been huge successes and are now firm fixtures in the annual calendar with global whiskey fans booking their trips well in advance. Karen Betts, Scotch Whiskey Association Chief Executive said, the growing number of visitors to distilleries reflects in part the growth in tourism to Scotland in general, and people coming to Scotland want to see our local crafts and sample our local food and drink but it also reflects a growing curiosity about Scotch whiskey. Today's consumers want to understand and experience how their favorite blends and malts are made to meet the people who make them and to see which part of Scotland's beautiful landscape they call home. From a UK-wide perspective, there are more visits to Scottish distilleries in 2018 than St. Paul's Cathedral, Stonehenge, or Westminster Abbey. Fiona Hislop, Cabinet Secretary for Culture, Tourism, and External Affairs, said the level of investment from the Scotch 
industry to grow whiskey tourism is helping to boost the Scottish economy. She said tourism is one of the key sectors and spending and jobs associated with visitor centers and distilleries boost our economy, especially in more remote rural areas. With investment across Scotland from major firms such as Diageo in the new Johnny Walker experience in Edinburgh to Rosebank in Falkirk and Brora in the Highlands, it's a really exciting time for the whiskey tourism sector. The Scottish government is committed to working with partners like the Scotch Whiskey Association to increase our tourism offer and encourage more people to visit distilleries. Scotland is currently home to over 130 operational malt and grain distilleries, and at last count, 88 of them are open to the public for tours. Many new distilleries are building visitor attractions at the heart of their operation, while a growing number are now collaborating to create whiskey trails, making it easier for tourists to visit a number of distilleries within a small region. So there's one other element about being a whiskey tourist mm, that I don't want to lose sight of. And I sort of made mention of it in a live stream in another video um, regarding my recent trip to uh, Texas distilleries. As great as it is to visit the distilleries and do a tour, that's not the only place that you as a whiskey hunter or whiskey enthusiast can go to enjoy whiskeys. There are excellent whiskey bars that you can go and taste some very rare by the glass whiskeys, and you can go shopping as well to look for bottles to uh, bring home. So if you're passing through Texas, you don't have time to stop at a distillery, boom, you can pick up uh, a bottle or two at a uh, store in Texas uh, that you're not gonna be able to find outside of Texas. And likewise, if you happen to be in Scotland, perhaps in uh, Edinburgh or Glasgow, and you're there on business or for some other reason or a family trip, other reason other than being able to visit distilleries, check out the local whiskey shops. There are a ton of them. However, you do got to be careful, especially near Edinburgh, because everything is priced for the tourists. However, those locations, particularly if you're near uh, the Edinburgh Castle, the real estate's going to be higher, leases are going to be higher because that's prime real estate to reach to tourists. So they're going to be a little bit more expensive. However, uh, check out some videos by some friends of mine. Uh, Phil and Deepa on their channels called Captain 3D. Uh, as I'm recording this, I'm going to be posting this. They're actually in Scotland right now, and they've been posting some really cool whiskey vlogs of their visits to uh, whiskey shops in Edinburgh. Next up, Whiskey Trail and Loch Fine, I think. <laughs> Let's go on our own Whiskey Trail. Whiskey Trail number two. So just so you know, uh, that funny music that's in there, I put that in there. 
Uh, I just wanted to give you a glimpse of what the place looked like. If you want to know more about the narration and commentary on the prices uh, in the whiskey shops, check out Captain 3D. Uh, put a link up here, over there, down below, and so forth. Check out their channel and watch their whiskey vlogs. You can sort of live uh, vicariously through them and exploring whiskey shops there. And I'm sure they're bringing home uh, a few gems. And they're actually from the UK. You can tell by the accents. Uh, but they live here in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I'm hoping to meet up with them again, and we'll share our, some of our experiences to um, uh, Scotland and some of the bottles that we brought home. Alrighty, um, that's it for this video. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I greatly appreciate it. If you would subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and the other social networking channels. And if you haven't yet, and you ever have the opportunity, I highly, highly recommend going to Scotland and exploring um, the distilleries, uh, the castles, the whiskey shops, um, the historical ruins there. There's so much more there than just the, the distilleries and the whiskeys, but uh, definitely you're going to want to check out a few. And there's so many bottles there that you can't even get that never leave Scotland. Uh, the, the challenge is not finding rare or hard to find bottles. It's trying to figure out what you can fit in your luggage and bring it home. All right, until next time, cheers. Hey, if you liked my review, be sure to check out these other whiskey videos.